So now that we've looked at evaluating multiple expressions using rules, and we've looked at solving nonlinear systems of equations using the find root function, we can use the rules to create our own newton raphson method, and we can use the find root function to check our answers. Now before we figure out how to define our function, let's recall what happens in the newton raphson method. To find our next iteration, xi plus 1, we add delta to xi. And in order to find delta x, we need to multiply the vector of our functions evaluated at xi by the negative inverse of our k matrix, which contains the partial derivatives of our functions evaluated at xi. Needless to say, a lot goes on in the newton raphson method, so we should consider programming each iteration into a separate function, then use a calling function to put the iterations together in a table. So let's set up a function that finds delta for each of our iterations. We'll call this function nr one iteration. And we'll need to input a vector of functions, variables, and initial guesses. All of our matrix operations will be dependent on how many variables we have, so we'll need the length of x0. So n equals the length of x0. And now this is where things get tricky. We have a vector containing our variables and a vector containing our initial guesses. We'll need to evaluate the inverse of k multiplied with f at different values depending on the variable. The easiest way to do this is to create a table of rules just like we did in our example earlier. Only this time it'll be input dependent, so we'll need to use the table function. So we'll call this x rule, and it'll be a table of x i's evaluated at x naught of i's. So here, we're using this rule to evaluate each variable at its respective initial guess. And we'll go i from 1 to n. Now we need our k matrix, which contains partial derivatives. Because it's a matrix, we'll need both an i and a j increment for the f and x respectively. We'll call this guy kk. We'll need a table function once again. We're taking a derivative of f of i with respect to x of j. Where i goes from 1 to n. And j goes from 1 to n. Finally, we can do our calculation for delta. So delta is going to be the negative inverse of kk. And we can just use a period for element-wise multiplication. And now this is where our x rule comes in handy. And then we want to output delta. Now that we have a function responsible for each of our iterations, we can make a calling function which takes care of checking for convergence and evaluating each iteration. We'll call this one newt rafts. And we'll need the same inputs, but this time we need a stopping error and a maximum number of iterations as well. So f, vector of x's, vector of x naught, a stopping error, and a maximum number of iterations. We'll set our first error to 1. And the first entry in our x table will be x naught. We want our iterations to keep going until either we've reached the stopping error or we've reached the maximum number of iterations without converging. Because of that, we should use a while loop. 
Since we're using a while loop, we'll need to define the initial value of our increment first. So we'll set i equal to 1. Now while, we'll use the and function because we have two conditions that need to be met. Keep going, so long as error table of i is greater than the stopping error, and i is less than or equal to n max. Now we'll call our previous function to get the value of delta. So delta equals, we'll use a numeric function to make sure we don't get any fractions. And our one iteration with f, x, and x table of i as the initial guess. Now that we have delta, we can append our new guesses into our x table. So x table will be appended with delta plus x table of i, just like our formula up here. Now we need to add a new error to our error table. We know from class that the error of the newton raphson method is the norm of delta divided by the norm of the previous iteration. So error table will be appended with the norm of delta divided by the norm of x table of i. And then we increase our increment. Now with our table, if we wanted to add titles, we would need to assume how many variables are being plugged into the function. It's very simple to do otherwise, so I'll just omit that here so the function defined will work for any number of variables. We'll make our table in order from iteration number, variables, and error. I'm going to do this in one line, which will be a bit confusing, I'll explain later. So first we want to append the transpose of x table with air table. Then we want to prepend a table containing our iterators. So D, where D goes from zero to I minus one, which will be the last iteration. And then we'll transpose the whole thing. And we'll have T in matrix form. Now I'll scroll down so I can illustrate how I made T, since this is a bit of a mess. So first, we started off with X table, which has N rows and M columns, depending on how many iterations it took. Then we have air table which is a one by n vector. Now in order to append air table into x table as the last column, first we need to transpose x table. Then we can add Airtable to the very end of it. 
And then we also have this other vector d, the iteration number, which is also 1 by n. So d, this is 1 by n, can also be added now to the beginning of the x table. And then in order to get this in the proper form, we just have to transpose it back. So the iteration number are x's. and our errors for each iteration. All right, so now we'll go ahead and erase this so we can finish up. So I'll just go ahead and press shift enter to initiate our function. And now let's try our function and compare it to the find root function. So we'll find root. Our equation will be x1 squared plus x1 times x2 minus 10 is equal to 0, x2 plus 3x1 times x2 squared minus 57 is equal to 0. And we'll have an initial guess where x1 starts at 1.5 and x2 starts at 3.5. And then we'll use our Newton wraps method with the same functions. So if we'll take out the zeros. And our two variables, x1 and x2. We'll go with the same initial guesses. We'll have a max error of 0 0.00001, and we'll go up to 50 iterations. Now shift enter, and we get the same result as the find root function. In this tutorial, we took a look at using the find root function for nonlinear systems, and how to use rules to evaluate multivariable expressions. Then. We applied everything, including partial derivatives, to define our own Newton-Raphson method function. That's it for this tutorial. Good luck with your labs.